What is up everyone? Thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel. I'm Amy McHugh. Before we get started, if you wanna see more videos from me, hit that subscribe button, and I'd love it if you hit that like button. Okay, so to get started, today I'm here in my kitchen, and I am going to do something a little different than I'm kind of excited about. So as a health coach, I love making healthy meals. I love home-cooked meals. It's really important to me. But as a mom, I know that life is busy and sometimes it's really difficult to make healthy meals. You wanna grab something quick on the go or you don't feel like you have time. So when I'm cooking, my meals need to be one of two things. They need to be quick, healthy, and easy, or they need to be something that I can make a lot of and freeze for later. So today I'm going to be making a soup for y'all. I think you're gonna love it. It is a perfect fall soup. It is a butternut squash soup. It is going to be a lot of work, but, uh-oh. Liam wants to say hi. It's gonna be a lot of work, but it's going to make a lot. So I can put it in the freezer, you can put it in the freezer, save it for later, and have something easy to grab when you're in a rush. One thing about this recipe is it is not gluten or dairy free. If that is something you want, however, I think it's pretty easy to make it gluten free at least. My family generally eats gluten free. We sometimes eat gluten, but in general, we feel better when we don't eat it. It's not that great for you, and so that's how we like to live. So I would normally make this recipe without the gluten, but I'm gonna make it exactly how the recipe calls for so you guys know exactly how to make it. And then if you wanna substitute and take some gluten out and put something else in for a thickener, you can. So this recipe has a roux, which if you don't know what that is, it's a thickener made from flour and butter just to make the soup a little bit thicker. I think it's plenty thick without it, so you could probably leave it out altogether or you could do some cornstarch or some arrowroot to thicken if you want. So that's probably a pretty easy fix if you want it to be gluten-free. As far as dairy-free, it might take a little bit more to be creative, but you could probably make it dairy-free if you want. Oh my goodness. This guy is so chatty, which I absolutely love, but sometimes it makes me hard to make some videos, so hopefully you can hear me above his chatter. Say hi. So, really excited to get into this recipe for you all. I'm gonna be doing more of these videos with some home cooked meals. So if you guys are looking for a quick dinner or lunch or snack idea for yourself or the kids, this is the place to be. So hold on and I'm gonna get into it. If you stay all the way to the end of this video, you'll have all the directions to make the soup. I promise you will not be disappointed. Okay, I am so excited for you guys to try this soup. It's delicious, you are going to love it. So the first step is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You're gonna cut these butternut squash after you wash them. You're gonna take all the seeds out and get them ready to be roasted. And they are going to be roasted in the oven at 350 degrees for an hour. So scoop all that stuff out of there, get them nice and clean and ready to roast. Now the way that I roast these butternut squash is I'm going to put them in a pan there's two of them, so I'm just gonna use two pans. Put them in a pan and put about an inch of water in the pan with them facing up. Put some oil on the top and stick them in for about an hour. While those are roasting, I'm gonna peel and core a Granny Smith apple and cut up this yellow onion and you're gonna stick it in with a butternut squash and you want them to be roasting for about 40 minutes. So stick it in about 20 minutes after you put the butternut squash in. And those will roast in there and my apple kind of turned to mush, which is totally fine. You're gonna be blending it all up anyway. Okay, and there you can see I've put them in together and those will roast together for about 40 minutes. Here's the finished product. You can see the apple did turn to mush, like I said, but it's totally fine. We'll just put it all together later. 
Now I'm gonna get the chicken stock and you're gonna need eight cups of chicken stock and you can put that in a pot and then you're gonna end up getting the butternut squash in there to cook with the chicken stock. So I'm gonna scoop it all out. This is one of the hardest parts. It just takes a little while to get it all in there. You're just gonna scoop all of that in there with that chicken stock so it can cook up together. And then I'm gonna scoop that apple and that onion in there with it so they can all cook together and make a super tasty beginning of a soup. So you're gonna let the contents of the soup simmer for about 45 minutes or until it is softened. While it simmers, you can make your roux. If you don't know what that is, it is basically flour and butter cooked till thick, so you can add it to the soup as a thickener. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you are gluten-free, I think the soup is thick enough without this, or you could probably use something else like cornstarch or arrowroot to thicken it. I would generally go without, but I wanted to make it exactly as the recipe calls for so that you guys can see how it is and you can choose to use a thickener or not depending on if you're gluten-free or not. So you just mix the butter together. It's going to be 3 fourths cup roux, which is going to be 3 eighths cup butter and 3 eighths cup flour, which I whisked together until it was thick. Then you're gonna blend up the contents of the pot that has been cooking for 45 minutes. Should be soft, blend it until it is all blended together perfectly. And then you're gonna add that blended contents to a pot. I started to use a bigger pot because I knew everything wasn't gonna fit in that littler pot I was using. So here's the blended contents. And now we're gonna start adding some other ingredients. So you're gonna need two pints of heavy whipping cream. I didn't have quite enough heavy whipping cream, so that's why I'm using a little bit of half and half, but it'll be fine, but it technically calls for the whipping cream. Then you want one and a half cups of orange juice, which I'm gonna add in here. Then you want one and a half cups of white wine. The recipe didn't specify what kind of white wine to use, so I just grabbed something at the grocery store. You can really use whatever kind you want. Next, you're gonna need six cups of coconut milk. Once again, I was a little unprepared. I had coconut milk and almond milk mixed, but it's gonna be fine. So you're gonna stir this up and bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for about 30 minutes. And while it does, I'm gonna add in the spices. So here we have some cayenne pepper and you want one fourth teaspoon cayenne pepper. Then I'm gonna take my cumin and I'm gonna do one teaspoon of that. Next, I have cinnamon and I'm gonna do three fourths teaspoon cinnamon. My goodness, you guys, this is gonna be so good. And then next, curry, and I'm gonna do one teaspoon curry powder. And then last, but definitely not least, is the nutmeg. You're gonna do three fourths teaspoon nutmeg. You can also add salt now if you want. I usually just wait and add salt individually to the bowls. And then I'm gonna add the roux for thickener and mix that all together and then let it simmer for that 30 minutes. Just definitely stir that roux in. Here you can see it, it's looking amazing. I'm gonna let that simmer. And then here's the finished product. I added some nutmeg on the top to garnish and it's amazing.